Good morning, dear friends. We are about to start this Mass of Friday, the fifth week of Easter. In today's Mass, we continue to pray for all those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray for all of you, wherever you are, and joining us, especially our patients here at Waltery. We pray and ask that God's grace may be granted to you for your healing and total recovery. We pray for our doctors, our staff, pray for nurses and all those who constantly put themselves at risk to care for their sick, that God may protect them and keep them safe. We also pray for their families. I pray for all those who celebrate their, their birthdays or anniversaries today. Pray for people recovering from other diseases and ailments, cancers, tumors, or diabetes. Pray that God may be with you and that God may help you. Pray for those who feel overwhelmed at this time. That God may help them relieve their anxieties and help them find a course, a direction for their future. And please bring your intentions to God at this time and let us pray together from this altar. Our opening hymn will be table of plenty. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. My dear friends, we are so super blessed, so super blessed to be called to this privilege where we can share and be part of this table of plenty where God prepares every great blessing for his children. And so from this table, we offer God's prayer, we offer your prayers to God and ask that God may nourish you, your life, your soul, your spirit, and your family from this table. Let us go to God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us first acknowledge our unworthiness, ask God's mercy to take our sins away from His face, just so He can embrace and accept us and our prayers. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that being rightly conformed to the Paschal Mysteries, what we celebrate in joy, may protect and save us with perpetual power. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and Presbyters, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was also called 
Barsabbas and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and presbyters, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, of Gentile origin, greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey this same message by the word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. And so they went, they were sent on their journey. Upon their arrival in Antioch, they called the assembly together and delivered the letter. When the people read it, they were delighted with the exhortation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalmist, I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will give you thanks among the people, O Lord. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and chant praise. Awake my soul. Awake lion hop. I will awake the dawn. I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. I will give you thanks I will give thanks to you among the peoples, O Lord. I will chant your praise among the nations, for your mercy towards to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. Be exalted above all heavens, O God. Above all the earth be your glory. I will give thanks, I will give you thanks among the peoples, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you my friends, says the Lord, for I have made known to you all that the Father has told me. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. This I command you. Love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, 
today I will reflect with you from the first reading and the gospel reading. And the reason I chose to do that is because this two reading contrasts for me when God when, when God is leading the way and when we choose to lead the way as though it was God leading the way. From the first reading, I see how the apostle in good faith are struggling to resolve a conflict in the early church. It was a conflict about People like you and I, Gentiles, who were not of Abraham's biological descent. And so, they had to be accepted, but under what condition? What conditions were they going to be accepted to the family of God, to the church? So, some people were arguing that they had to be circumcised again. Could you imagine a 70-year-old man who is just getting converted to go through the experience of circumcision was that necessary for them to become children of God no it wasn't but somehow there were people who were believing that that was the way to go so technically they were caught in what I consider a cultural warfare it was a cultural warfare but yeah, it had a tradition because God had said to Abraham, every child born of you, male child born of you must be circumcised to the Christian. And so, but that was not the condition that God was still operating from. However, there were people still stuck on that initial condition as, as though we had not grown or matured or developed. And so, when the church moved to Gentile world, those born of Abraham decided, unless someone goes through every procedure that we have to go through, they are not qualified to be like us. They have to be like us in everything for them to be accepted by God, even though God did not put those conditions. So the first council had to deal with this. And I agree with the good faith of the apostles. I just disagree with their conclusion. And I don't do this often where I disagree with what the apostles say. Because I am saying to myself, and I, I think that's where the gospel comes to my heart. The reason why this gospel is placed here is the gospel summarizes for us the basic tenet of Christian teaching and theology and practice. Jesus lays it out in very few words. You want to be my disciple? Learn to love the other as I love you. It is that simple. You want to be my disciple? Absolutely. You want to be like me? You want to be another Christ? Absolutely. That's possible. Just learn to love the other person. Just learn to treat the other person as I love and treat you. So he says, this is my commandment. And you can mention a number of times that the Lord repeated this very clearly to the apostles. This is my commandment. This is the only thing that makes you a disciple. This is the only qualification, the only condition that you must fulfill. If you love me and keep my word. So he says, this is my commandment to you. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus did not say what the apostles were telling the early Christians here. And I don't know where they got this from. That's why I said they were stuck in a cultural warfare. They were trying to maybe please the Jews who were, who were reacting and for God to teach what the Lord handed over to them. The Lord handed over to them. Love of neighbor, love of God and love of neighbor. Not all the prescriptions here. They said, um, if you avoid meat, 
abstain from meat of strangled animals, blood uh, from meat or from idols, from unlawful marriage. If you do this, you are doing. That's not what the Lord said. That's not what the Lord taught them. You cannot find that anywhere. However, but you find that in the Jewish law. And I'm saying to myself, how often do we get stuck in cultural battles and cultural war and we forget what the Christian message, the central Christian message is? Redemption, love of God, love of the other and treatment of the other as Jesus treats me and treats you. How often do we get caught up with everything else and we forget what is central? What is what defines us? What our identity should be? I must tell you, in this text, more than anywhere else, the apostles completely dropped the ball. The Lord has said to them, even towards the end, he says, this is my command to you. What was wrong with them telling the early church, if you do this, this is what the Lord told us, to love one another and to treat one another as he treats us. That would have been enough instead of going through all of these cultural restrictions. That don't make no sense. And, and I wonder how often we as a church get stuck with things like this and we move away and drift away from what is central and what is important to God and to Christ, his only son. So that's one thing I want us to think about. Think about each time we, we veer off into small things, things that don't make sense. We lose the central thing that matters more than anything else. And this is true, whether it's in relationships or it's in just one's personal life, in one's spiritual life. And how often do we sneak into these small things? We do when we cannot face the most difficult things. We see ourselves doing all these little things that don't make sense. Or are not as important because they allow us place to go hide and feel secure. The difficult thing is to love the other person. It's more difficult than not eating meat, than fasting on Friday. I'm not saying those things are not good. But the real difficult thing is to love me, especially when I'm unlovable. It's to love you, especially when you're unlovable. That's the difficult thing. So when we don't want to do the difficult things, we begin to do all other little things and they make us feel comfortable that we're doing God's will. God's will is clear. Love your neighbor as I have loved you. Love the other as I have loved you. Treat the other as I treat you. Forgive the other. Expand. Expand your horizon as I expand the kingdom. That is more important, and I hope our church will focus on what Jesus focused on when he addressed the apostles. I want to take one minute to pay tribute to all those who do what the Lord said. No greater love than this, and for one to lay down his life for his friends. Today, I, I want to pay tribute to all of you parents out there who are laying down your lives for your children, maybe children who have very, very unique medical or health condition and need your time, almost every minute of your time is taken to care for them. I want to pay tribute to you because you daily lay down your lives for your children. I want to pay tribute to our doctors and our nurses, especially at a time like this. Because you are right there laying down your lives every day for your patients. Not minding the risks you face to yourself and to your families. Laying down your lives. I want to pay tribute to that wife or to that husband who is caring for her husband or his wife who is so sick at this time. You lay down your life for your wife. I want to pay tribute to that daughter who is taking care of her old or sick mom or dad. You lay down your life for that person. You're doing exactly what Jesus said. What greater love than that? 
And, and there are many of us out there who are doing exactly that. In whatever you are doing to lay down your life for the other, I want to pay tribute to you. God is aware of what you are doing. And God will bless you. Keep doing. No greater love than what you do. My dear friends, as always, I like to end everything I say and do by reminding you that you are still and will always be the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, I want to thank you and I want to bless you for this wonderful moment you have given to us to worship from this table of abundance. We ask, dear God, that you help us to live with the mindset of abundance, abundant mercy, abundant love, abundant grace, abundance of everything good because that is what you called us into, that we be instruments of abundance. Help us, Almighty God, to overcome the restrictions and the constrictions that keep us away from each other. That build walls instead of bridges. That build doors instead of open. That build um, walls instead of doors and windows. Help us, dear God, to do what you have called us and bear the mark of your disciples. Love for the other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick and pray for all those who have asked our prayers at this time. We beg you, dear God, that their prayers from this altar may rise to you like incense and may bring you glory and honor. And in turn, dear God, that they may receive the favors they are asking. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for our sick here in this hospital. We pray, dear God, for their families. Pray for doctors and nurses who are caring for them. That your grace may be granted to those who care so that their touch, their words, and their love may bring comfort, strength, and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Almighty God, for those who are overwhelmed at this time, overwhelmed by the pressures pushing on every side as a result of this coronavirus. We beg, dear God, that they may feel the relief that comes from your presence, that they may feel the strength of the spirit that drives us forward through all challenges and battle hills. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Graciously sanctify this deed to Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for with the all other destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, 
and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of our peace. From me to all of you, wherever you are worshipping from, from this hospital and around, I send in my peace from this altar to you, through Christ. May God rest with you, God's peace rest with you, abide with you, and bring you his calm and his mercies. As always, you are the light of God. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Run for space. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. This is our Savior, our bread of life, our love. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Then only say the word and my soul shall be free. As we open our heart for spiritual communion, let us invite God into our home. Let us invite our Savior into our lives. Gracious God, as your children around the world seek to receive you every day, but are unable to, we beg that your grace may be felt in their hearts, in their souls, and in your spirit, that you may visit with them every day, nourish them, and minister to them in this Eucharist. We ask, Almighty God, that every heart that seeks you may receive you, that every soul that desires you may find you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring you, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the rings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for, join, from, for joining us at this Eucharist. Pray that God may continue to be with you and that you may feel God's grace and strength for every need that you have. God loves you very much. I want to wish you a very blessed weekend. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a hymn to our Blessed Mother, a holy queen and throne above. A holy queen and throne above, O Maria, a mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, triumphal ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim, heaven on earth resounding him, salve, 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 Regina. Life of sweetness here below, O Maria. I hope in sorrow and in woe, O Maria. Triumph on ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim.